In this video, I'm going to show you how to make LED flags or LED whips. Brought to you by buyheatshrink.com. You're going to start by gathering the various materials you need, which I will leave a list of in the description below. Grab your flagpole mount. Mine can fit a one inch pole and also can pivot. It doesn't need to be pivoting, but I will explain why I used pivot later on in the video. Next, grab your flag poles and you're going to clean the inside and outside of these. I used a deburring tool for the inside and used my belt sander to clean up the outside so it can fit on the flagpole mount. As you can see, after it's cleaned up, it easily slides onto your flagpole mount. Next, grab some acetone and a rag and you're going to wipe the outsides down of any oils or greases that were left on there from machining. After that, find a way to support your poles and make it so they'll spin easy. This will make your life easier when you are wrapping the LEDs around it. After that, grab your spray paint, spray paint the bottom foot whatever color you want it to be. Uh, mine in this case is going to be gloss black. These are going to be going on my truck, so I'm measuring the distance in there to put a support plate of steel back there. In this case, it's just over 8 inches, but to leave room, I'm going to use 7 inches. So I'm going to mark 7 and 14 on this plate of steel I have here, and then cut that off on my chop saw. After cutting, I'm going to bring them over to my belt sander to take off any burrs that are on the edges. Then I'm going to find center on the plate and measure the length of the flag mount and get that so it's almost centered. It doesn't have to be exact, but as long as it's not off by like an inch. Once I get the center marked and I'm happy with its location, you can now mark the holes for the flagpole mount with either a small sharpie, or in my case, I'm going to use a center punch since my sharpies that I have would not fit down in the hole. After the center punch holes are made, you can see they leave a divot in there for the drill to be guided in. Take it over to the drill press, drill the holes out on the first plate. After the holes are drilled out on the first plate, you can then put the second plate behind it and re-drill those holes to mark it on the second plate. Switch the drills out for a bigger drill bit. In my case, I'm going to be using quarter inch bolts, so I'm using just over quarter inch size. After they're made bigger, you can switch it out for a countersink bit to clean up the burrs and leave a nice smooth edge. I'm going to take a quick second here to talk to you about the sponsor of this video and where I got my heat shrink from. First starting off when I made this project on my own before wanting to make this video, I didn't know where to get the heat shrink from. Uh, any local stores near me, biggest they sell is 3 8 diameter heat shrink and I needed obviously bigger than that. Um, if you go to your web browser here, type in buyheatshrink.com, homepage on the left side, go to heat shrink tubing, it'll pull up a bunch of different stuff that they have. They have a wide variety of even other than just heat shrink. Um, the one that I used is a 2 to 1. As it says, it's the most popular. You can go to 3 to 1 if you don't know what size to get. I recommend getting at least double the size of what you get on your pole that you're going to be using. Going back, you might be curious on their pricing that they have, and it's very, very reasonable in my opinion. Say you're going to use a half inch thick steel pole, you can go there. I'd at least get 3 quarter inch, if not 1 inch for that. If you get a 50 foot section right here, 
It's forty-two dollars right there. That's a good deal. Or fifteen bucks for ten feet. Ten feet should be plenty of what you need, especially if your pole is skinnier. The taller your pole can be with the entire strand of LEDs. The wider it is, the more spread out you have to be for the higher it is. So and I got extra for mine just in case if I did mess up. Their shipping is very reasonable. It came to my house in four days, and that was across the country from mine in the United States. So if you don't have any stores near you that sell heat shrink the size that you need, I recommend going to check out buyheatshrink.com. Great prices, fast shipping, definitely worth it. Moving back onto the video, you're going to take your heat shrink that you have to go around at all, cut the estimated length, which is probably going to be between 5 and 6 feet long, measure about 7 inches from the bottom, that's going to be the mark where you start wrapping your LEDs around it. Take your LEDs out of the bag, leave the controller and remote off to the side, you will not be using that, I'll explain later. Take your electrical tape and the start of the reel of your LEDs and tape it on about that mark, slightly angled upwards. You're then going to lift up the bottom of it and peel back the 3M adhesive backing and that's going to temporarily hold it all on for now and you're going to keep wrapping around the pole until your strip is all the way done. Once you get to the end, you're again going to take your electrical tape and tape the connector all the way on, fully covered so no water can get in it and possibly short anything out. Next, take your heat shrink and you're going to either cover that top edge in the middle with your electrical tape or something to prevent the big heat shrink from scratching and slide around down the pole. Once it's all the way on, you're going to make sure the top connector is fully covered with the heat shrink and the bottom connector is open so you can plug into it and get the power for it. Now before you start this, I would recommend testing your LEDs to make sure they work beforehand. If not, once you put the heat shrink down on it, you're going to have to cut it off and redo the LEDs if that's the case. It actually happened for me, but thankfully I added extra heat shrink left over. So now this part's going to take some patience and a lot of time. Um, not trying to concentrate the heat in one area too much so you burn the LEDs or any of the electronics in the strip. So just take your time and go slow. Once done with this step, you should have a nice smooth outside edge around the LEDs which hold them on and provide an extra bit of protection from the weather. For mine, I put caps on the tops, it's not necessarily necessary to do this, but it helps prevent water from getting in. These caps I just happen to randomly find laying around. You're next going to take your play to drill out and your flagpole mount and mount them where you are putting them. In my case, it's the toolbox on my truck. Slide your newly made LED flagpoles or whips in the flagpole mounts. 
and then you're going to zip tie your flags onto it if you are using them for flag mounts. As you can see here, the reason I went with the tilting flag mounts is so if I'm going to go down the highway or somewhere where it's very low clearance, I can tilt my flags down and have enough room or just so the wind doesn't tear up the flags. The LED controller that comes with these strips is only rated for 6 amps and that's what one strip draws is 6 amps so it's only safe for one strip but we are going to be using two strips of the LEDs since there's two poles. So what you're going to want to do is buy a more beefier one I guess you could say that can handle more amps. The one that I'm showing right here in the video is rated for 12 amps which is suitable but the one that I have mounted in my truck is rated for 36 amps which only costs $12 I believe. Um, I'll have the wiring diagram here at the end of the video. It's pretty simple how to do it. It's labeled on the thing of what to do. Right here I am unwrapping my old wiring for my old LED flags and I'm going to reuse that wiring for this.